In this video, we're going to talk about how to graph cubic functions using transformations. So let's start with the parent function, y is equal to x cubed. The general shape of that graph looks something like this. This function is always increasing for all x values. So as you move from left to right, in other words, as x increases, y increases. Now this is if we have a positive sign in front of the x cube. If we put a negative sign in front of x cube, the graph is going to reflect over the x axis, which for this specific example, it's equivalent to reflecting over the origin. So it's going to look like that. So with a negative sign, the graph is always, the function is always decreasing. As x increases, y decreases. Now, if we were to put an absolute value symbol in front of the x cubed term, what do you think the graph is going to look like? Looking at the first graph, the right side is going to stay the same, but the left side, it's going to flip over the x-axis. All the negative values will become positive values. So the graph is going to look like y equals x squared. So it should look something like this. At least that's a rough sketch of it. Now let's talk about transformations. Let's say we have this particular cubic function, y is equal to x cubed plus 2. How can we draw a rough sketch of this graph? So in the original function, y equals x cubed, the center was at the origin. For this one, it's going to be shifted up two units. So the center is going to be at 0, 2. So once we have the center point, we can basically draw the graph. Let's try another example. Let's graph y equals x cubed minus 3. Now, if we want to draw a rough sketch, we could see that we need to shift down three units. So the center is going to be right there. And we know the graph, it's because we have a positive in front of the x cube, it's always increasing. So it's going to look like this. Now, what about if we have y is equal to x minus 2 raised to the third power? What's going to happen this time? In this case, the graph is going to shift two units to the right. If you set the inside equal to, to 0 and solve for x, you'll get x is equal to 2. So the x coordinate of the center is going to be 2 comma 0. I mean, the x coordinate is just 2, but the full coordinates of the center is going to be 2 comma 0. So the graph is going to be shifted 2 units to the right. And we still have an increase in function. So still going to have, we're still going to have the same general shape. Go ahead and try this example. Let's graph y is equal to x plus 4 raised to the third power, and also negative x minus 3 to the third power. Let's draw a rough sketch. So if we set the inside part x plus 4 equal to 0, after subtracting 4 from both sides, we'll get x is equal to negative 4. So the x coordinate of the center will be at negative 4. So the graph is going to shift four units to the left. Now, because we have a positive sign, if you don't see any sign, it's assumed to be positive. We have a cubic function that is always increasing. And so it should look something like this. Now, let's move on to the next example. 
So if we set x minus 3 equal to 0, we'll get x is equal to 3. That tells us that the center is going to be shifted 3 units to the right. Now we do have a negative sign in front of the cubic function. So it's going to flip, which means this function will always be decreasing. So it's going to be shifted 3 units to the right. Let's use a different color. Now this would be like an increase in function, but now that it's decreasing, it's going to look like this. So as you move from left to right, it's always decreasing now. Let's try this problem. y is equal to x minus 3 squared plus 2. Now for this one, we could draw a rough sketch, but let's draw a more, a more accurate sketch. So first, we know that, actually, before I get into that, here's the general form for a cubic function in standard form. It's y is equal to a x minus h. This should be to the third power, by the way, plus k. If a is positive, it's going to be increasing. It's always going up. If a is negative, you know it's decreasing. So just to draw that, for those of you who want to take some notes. So when a is positive, we're going to get this shape. And when a is negative, we'll get this shape. The coordinates of the center will be h, comma k. h is responsible for the horizontal translation and k will move the graph vertically up or down. So the graph will shift h units either to the right or to the left, and k units up or down. If k is positive, it's going to shift up. If k is negative, it will shift down. If h is positive, it shifts to the right. If h is negative, it shifts to the left. So in this example, we can see that a is positive 1. So we know that it's an increase in cubic function. h is 3, actually. Yeah, h is 3. Even though we see x minus 3, if you set that equal to x minus h, x will cancel. You get negative 3 is equal to a negative h. So h is positive 3. That negative sign could really confuse you if you're not too careful. k is positive 2. So because h is positive 3, it's going to shift 3 units to the right. k is positive 2, it's going to shift up 2 units. So the center, which is h k, it's going to be 3 comma 2. Now I'm going to make a data table, and I'm going to center the table around the center, 3, 2. I'm going to go one point to the right of 3 and one point to the left of 3. 1 to the third is 1, so this number will change by 1. Since it's an increase in function as we move from 3 to 4 along the x-axis, y is going to increase by 1. So it was 2, it increases by 1, now it's 3. If we move to the left, it's going to decrease by 1. Now I'm also going to get 5 and 1 as well. Going from 3 to 5, the x value changes by 2. 2 to the third power is 8. So it's going to be 8 more than this y value. 2 plus 8 is 10. And going from 3 to 1, we're decreasing the x value by 2. Negative 2 to the third power is negative 8. So if you take 2 subtracted by 8, you'll get a negative 6. This is a quick way to fill out the data table if you center the data table around the center and move 2 points to the right, 2 points to the left. It's always going to work this way. So for instance, if you plug in 5 in, into this equation, you should get 10 for y. Let's go ahead and do that. So 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 to the third power is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. 
if we were to plug in 2, it should give us 1. 2 minus 3 to the third power plus 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 to the third power is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. So if you don't want to plug in each point into the equation, the method I showed you for cubic functions, it'll work quickly. So you can get four of the points around the center. Once you have five points, including the center, it makes it a lot easier to graph this function with accuracy. So we only need to go up to five. On the y-axis, we need to go down to negative six. And we need to go up to positive 10. So the first point, actually let's start with the center. The center is at three comma two. If we move one unit to the right, we can go up one. So that will take us to four, three. If we go one to the left, down one, that will take us to two, one. Now from the center, I'm going to go two units to the right, eight units up. That'll take us to five, 10, which is somewhere over there. And from the center, if we go two to the left, down eight, because two to the third is eight. That'll take us to one negative six. So now we can get a more accurate sketch. So that's how you can graph cubic functions more accurately uh, using a data table along with transformations. Let's work on one more example for the sake of practice. Uh, feel free to pause the video if you want to. By the way, for those of you who want access to videos in a more structured way, check out my website video-tutor.net. I recently redesigned it so that you can find the videos by subject and by chapter. So for those of you who have a test, you want to quickly find all the videos you need to use in order to pass that test, you could find it a lot faster at my website. So feel free to pause the video and try this example. So we can see that a is negative one. H is, if you set x plus one, equal to zero and solve for x, you'll get that x is negative one, which will basically be your h value. Another way you can do it is if you set x plus one equal to x minus h, x will cancel. If one is equal to negative h, you need to multiply both sides by negative one, and you get that h is equal to negative one. Now, k k is positive 4. Instead of being on the right side, it's on the left. So don't let that trick you. Now, what's important is to notice this negative sign in front of the x plus 1 cubed term. So that tells us we're dealing with a decrease in function. So now let's go ahead and make a data, a data table. Hopefully I can fit it all here. And let's center it around the center. So it's hk, which is negative 1, 4. Let's go two points to the right from the center, so 0 and 1, and two points to the left, negative 1, negative 3. As we travel one unit away from the center, 1 to the third is 1, the y value will change by 1. So when x is 0, what is the y value going to be? Should we increase y by 1 or decrease by 1? So should it be 5 or 3? Now keep in mind, we're dealing with a decrease in function. So to the right, we should be going down. So to the right of negative 1 is 0. We need to decrease the y value by 1 as opposed to increasing it like we did last time because now we're dealing with a decrease in function. So this is going to be 3. This is going to be 5. The y value should be decreasing as x increases. Now what about at 1? which is two units away from the center, negative one. Two to the third is eight. So we're gonna change 
we're going to decrease y by 8, starting from the center at 4. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. If you don't like doing it this way, keep in mind you can plug in these values and get the same y values here. Now, going two units to the left, we need to go up by 8, starting from 4, which will take us to 12. As we can see, y is decreasing, which is what we want. It does a negative sign here. Now, let's go ahead and graph everything. So I'm going to need a lot of points on the upper y-axis. So I'm going to draw the graph like this. I only need to go to negative 3 on the, the left x-axis. Okay, we're going to have to extend this. So that's going to be 12. So let's start with the center, which is negative 1, 4. I'm going to need some points below that as well. Next, we have 0, 3, and then 1, negative 4. Next, we have negative 2, 5, and then negative 3, 12. And so that's how we can graph that particular cubic function. So that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to graph cubic functions with transformations, and you can graph accurate sketches with the help of a data table.